All right, welcome back. Today we're looking at k closest points to origin, otherwise known as k nearest neighbors. Uh, in this problem set, we're receiving a vector, a vector of points, and a k value, which is, and we need to return the top k elements closest to an origin, or usually a point. In this case, origin, so we don't have to worry about uh, these minus operations in the Euclidean distance formula. Sometimes that's a different formula, but uh, in any case, that's that. Uh, typically the way these problems are solved is you need some sort of a priority queue. In this case, a binary heap data structure. Um, usually you represent these, you can, you can represent these as an array where the children of a parent value, in this case, let's say index zero would be at two i plus 1 would be the left node, 2i plus 2 would be the uh, right node, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of that. Insertion is pretty straightforward. It's kind of insert the element to the back, um, compare with the parent, and if things are in the correct order, you stop, otherwise swap them so on and so forth. Extraction is sort of the opposite. You are going to compare with the children and pushing down an item to the end until it meets that criteria. Uh, we're going to be looking at a few things like uh, generics, uh, total order operations, and eventually we'll, uh, aside from implementing the binary heap, we'll actually be using a binary heap uh, structure that Rust, the standard library, provides. Uh, so let's get started. And I'm going to go ahead and cargo watch. So first thing I want to do here is actually implement our heap. And this is going to be the uh, vector of the distance items. Right. We have our implementation. We're going to need a new to return self. Right. We're going to need a push. operation uh, this should be an option because it may not always return we're going to need a bubble up function right and we'll need a bubble down function So in our push operation here, right? And actually, I'm just going to do this really quickly. That way, we can have ourselves a test case to work with. All right. For now, that's going to fail, as we would expect. Okay. Now with our push operation, remember we have to push it to the end, bottom level of the heap. Heap dot push. L. And then we're going to call it bubble up. Right? So bubble up. start by looking at the end of our 
vector and iterating until we reach this condition here where if they're in the correct order um, so you're comparing the element with its parent if they're in the correct order stop otherwise swap the elements so keep doing that over and over until or until we reach an index of zero so let's grab that element It's important to note here that uh, when you access an item in this way at an offset, you can run into an out of boundary error. So uh, sometimes you can do something like this where you say if let, uh, it's one of those control flow operations that the Rust book provides or goes over where you can say something like let if let sum heap.get provides an option right now now we're guaranteed to have a value um, so that is one way to do it um, again you're guaranteed it's much safer to do it this way but since we're already dealing with uh, the correct indexes I'm just gonna uh, avoid that for now Right. And then there's a handy little function in Vect called swap. You actually can see it there. Where you can swap two elements within a slice. Super handy so you don't have to allocate and have references and everything. So um, in other languages they let you kind of do offsets, switches, but in any case, so we're gonna say uh, I am parent index items parent index all right so that's it for push now for pop we're gonna go from the opposite end so let's just go ahead and get the length we did before uh, we have three different conditions there's only one item in the list go ahead and just return that there's more than one item we're going to do our operations otherwise return none all right so first thing we're going to do swap the what is the current max with the rightmost child all right and now we can grab that max by just doing a pop operation and we're going to call bubble down that first item that we swapped and we just turn max. Alright, so let's get down to our bubble down. Right. Okay, so looking at left child, if you look here, it's typically 2i plus 1, right child, 2i plus 2. Right. And then we're going to be working with our largest, current largest index, which is i. It's not our largest because remember we grabbed it from the end of the array and we swapped it. So this is why we're pushing it down. So as we iterate over, let's grab the length real quick. Assuming that the left index is less than length, if the left child absolutely greater than what is our current largest index the new largest index is now left the left child if the right child is greater than then largest is right and of course if they've changed go ahead and swap There's the child with that parent and then call bubble down again on that new item. All right, so now we have that. We can save. Oops, we didn't compare to something. Great, look at that. 
now our tests pass. Awesome. So now we can push, we can pump, let's get in the correct order. Uh, but let's make a change to this because this doesn't actually support any kind of generics and we don't want to just work with i32s. So if you look at generics here, um, it's pretty straightforward. Use a T. Um, remember, we're going to be working with points, so let's go ahead and just start creating the point now. You're going to need a distance, so our Euclidean distance, and we're going to need a point. Store that. We are going to need two things. I'm doing debug for now. We're going to need to use partial equal, right? Why do we need partial equal? Well, we also need partial order. Why? Because in order for things to be compared properly and sorted uh, as it's making those greater than or less than operations um, when you're pushing onto the heap or bubbling things up or bubbling things down, it needs to make those comparisons. So we have to have point be able to implement that. So let's go ahead and do that here. Right. We're just going to use the distance. Right. So we have that. We're also going to need to implement total order. Point. Now floats don't have total order because they're floating points. However, we're going to kind of cheat in this case and just use the partial order and just unwrap directly. And then we'll just have a EQ, All right? Okay, cool. So now we have an actual point, but our structure does not implement any kind of ordering. So, or for generics. So what we're going to do is we're going to add T here, and then we're going to say where T is ord, right? same thing here and here. Now all we have to do is change i32 to t, t, great, that's it. Okay, so now it supports that, we have our point. Now what don't we have? We don't have any way, we don't have our actual function. So Let's go ahead and start writing that. Nearest points. Okay. Turning a vector of x, I32. Alright. Heap. New. Iterate over our points. Now we need to actually calculate that Euclidean distance function that we mentioned. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to simplify this by mapping over those called pow, exponent, square it, and then call sum. And then we're going to convert that to an F32 floating point, and we're going to call square root. Okay. Now we just go ahead and push. Point distance r point. Now we need our results. Right? And now we're going to use a range operation, right? So in 0, k. Right? Nope, we're not going to use i, so we don't need that. I'm going to say if let sum v heap dot pop point break results. Okay, so we have that. And now we're going to need some tests. Tests. This one's working with empty points. 
and one with a bad K, one point, top K points. Let's go ahead and save that. Oh no. So it worked for the other ones, but it didn't work for this one. Why? Well, I notice it's actually in the wrong order. So because we're looking at the minimum distance, we need to actually reverse these. So there is an, as part of order, standard compare and reverse, you can call reverse. So it does the opposite for min. So instead of a max heap, you've got a min heap. Let's do that here. Right. Now we can save that. Great. So that passes. Uh, one last thing is for, since we're using our own implementation heap, we can actually change that to the internal standard collection. Right. Just by changing that, everything should work the exact same. Oh, and we actually forgot to add it. Right. And it does. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for generics, binary heap, um, structs, um, things like that. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.